In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Milton Johns, and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears, and lead us to praise you for having brought him to faith. In your rising from the dead, you conquered death and opened the gates to eternal life. Strengthen us with your word, and lead us through this earthly life until at last we are united with you and all believers in glory everlasting. Amen. We'll begin with the first hymn, The Old Rugged Cross.
For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. On Tuesday, September the 23rd, 1930, God blessed William John Johns and his wife Florence Dagmar Olson Johns with the gift of a baby boy, Milton William. Milton was born in Houghton, Michigan, the third child and first son with which God blessed William and Florence. <clears throat> Milton's other sub siblings included June, Shirley, Paul, and Dorothy. After Milton was born, the family moved to Ramsey, Michigan, and then to Michigami, where he grew up. He attended the Bethlehem Swedish Lutheran Church in Michigami. The Lord Jesus in mercy washed away Milton's sins and made him a child of God and heir with Christ when he was baptized by Pastor E.F. Brandt in Houghton, Michigan on January the 27th, 1931. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. Milton grew up in Michigami, Michigan, where he would graduate in 1948. After graduating from Michigami High School, Milton moved to the Detroit area where he worked briefly for a lathing company before being drafted into the army to serve during the Korean conflict. After serving his country for one and a half years, Milton was honorably discharged in California and made his way back home to Michigami. Milton took a job in St. Paul, Minnesota, putting up storefronts for two to three years before returning to the UP to Marquette where he was employed by Cliff Dow for 14 years. After working for Cliff Dow, Milton worked for Cleveland Cliffs Incorporated in the Eagle Mills, Mather B, and Empire Mine. He retired while working at the Empire Mine. Who can find a virtuous wife, for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. She will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 12. On Saturday, July 16, 1966, Milton married Patricia Lois Preeb Roy at St. Paul's Lutheran Church at Green Garden by then Pastor Bertram J. Nauman. God blessed Milton Pat with three children, David, Mary, and Cynthia. Milton became a member of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, where he served on the church council and as president. When it became necessary because of conscience to remove their membership from St. Paul's Lutheran, Milton served in a leadership role as president of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Good Shepherd became a part of Calvary Lutheran Church, where Milton continued to serve in a number of different roles. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. The Savior Jesus strengthened Milton's faith through word and sacrament joyfully received at Calvary Lutheran Church in Marquette, Michigan. Milton also served the community as a volunteer fireman, serving as fire chief for many years until his retirement. When Milton wasn't involved in helping others home renovation or car maintenance, he spent his time traveling by way of airplane, ship, or RV. He's visited Florida, New Mexico, California, and all states in between. When back home in the UP, you would find him either camping, playing cribbage, bowling, or working on crossword puzzles. He was a member of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. The earthly life of a child of God is never easy this side of heaven, and Milton was not immune from sickness and sorrow. For a number of years, he underwent treatment for a form of cancer. He kept an upbeat spirit during the COVID-19 pandemic, 
attending worship when possible, Milton received hospice care from Lake Superior Hospice. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. John 14, verses 2 and 3. On the morning of Monday, June 14th, the Lord Jesus kept his promise to Milton as he has every other believer in Christ. He sent his angels to receive his soul from his body to his heavenly home. Milton's remains will be laid to rest at Northland Chapel Gardens to await the glorious return of the Lord Jesus, when his body will be raised and glorified and reunited with his soul, perfectly prepared for life in the new heavens and the new earth. Milton Johns lived a life full of blessings on this earth for 90 years, 8 months, 21 days. He awaits the glorious reappearing of the Savior Jesus when by God's grace through faith in Christ, he will enter eternal life in both soul and body. Milton is preceded in death by his parents, William and Florence Johns, a sister, June Adelaide Johns DiPietro, and brother Paul Leonard Johns, wife Jean, as well as other friends and acquaintances. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 4. We have gathered here today to thank God for the many blessings that he showered upon Milton Johns. While we sorrow in saying goodbye, we will remember the mints and suckers that he shared with us and know that the separation is temporary. For more than any other earthly blessing or ability, our gracious God blessed Milton with a faith in Jesus Christ, in his sinless life, sacrificial death, and glorious resurrection. He counted it as his guarantee of life eternal. Those who remain in their time of grace to taste and see that the Lord is good include his wife, Patricia Lois Johns, his children, David and Rieko Johns of Tokyo, Japan, Mary and Michael Horvath of Gwyn, Cynthia Sobchak of Harvey, Michigan, his siblings Shirley and Bud Labin, Dorothy and Ken Fortin of Marquette, his sisters and brothers-in-law, seven grandchildren, five great-grandchildren, several nieces and nephews, as well as many friends and acquaintances. Jesus said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of the grave and of death. Dear friends in Christ, since it has pleased Almighty God in his divine wisdom to call Milton Johns from this present life to himself in heaven, it is for our spiritual benefit that we hear the words and promises of God's holy word. Man who is born of woman is of few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and fades away. He flees like a shadow and does not continue. For through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We'll continue with the next hymn.
Patricia Lois, David, Mary, and Cindy, family and friends, members of Calvary Lutheran Church, the Word of God to which I direct your hearts and minds this morning is taken from the 119th Psalm, verses 103 and 104. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. In the name of Jesus the Christ, who makes us God's children through faith in what he himself has done. Sweet. It's a funny word, one that's used in different ways and applied to many different things. We may use it to describe something inedible that we are fond of. Did you see my new car? It's so sweet! We may use it of someone who's kind and considerate. Did you see the flowers that he gave me for our anniversary? He is so sweet. We may also use it to describe things that are sweet to our taste buds. Did you try the streusel kuchen? It is so sweet. For those of you who personally knew Milton Johns, you will agree that he was a sweet man, a very kind man. He was also known here at Calvary for passing out sweet things on Sunday. Milton would offer mints to anyone who asked for one. He also gave Tootsie Pop suckers to the Sunday school kids every week. He didn't do it to be noticed. It was just who he was. A sweet man, fond of sweets. He would probably be embarrassed if he knew that I was talking about those things now. For as kind and considerate as he was, he did not believe that he was acceptable to God because he attended church, much less because he handed out mints and Tootsie Pops. We tend to judge people, or at least grade them, based on the things that we see from them, don't we? In an emotional time like this, of course, we talk about what a sweet man Milton was, based upon what we saw and what we heard from him. But when God looked upon Milton Johns and when he looks upon us, he does not see sweetness and light. For we are all, without exception, born of sinful parents and have inherited a fallen nature. We prove ourselves to be sinful by the things that we think, do, and say. Milton was no exception. Neither am I, neither are you. When we see one another, we see only the facade, the external. When God looks at us, he sees everything. He knows what we think before we think it. He knows the sins we've committed in the dark and in secret. He knows what we say, even those things we say only to ourselves. But Milton Johns didn't only come to this building to hand out candy. He came here because he knew that he was a sinner. He knew that his sins had earned for him eternal death. He came here to confess his sins and to seek sweet comfort from God's Word. He came here to be told, Jesus died to pay for your sins, Milton. You are forgiven. It's far from sweet, on the other hand, to be told you're a sinner who's earned eternal death. Praise God that His law isn't the only message found in His Word. We also find there the promise of God's forgiveness in Christ, the promised Savior, Jesus. After all, it was the promise of God's forgiveness that moved the psalmist to write these words. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Now, perhaps some of you are grumbling to yourselves. What good did it do for Milton to hear the words of God? He still developed cancer. He still grew weak. He still died. What good did it do him? Well, let me tell you. When Satan whispered to Milton, you are a sinner, you deserve death in hell, Milton could say, that's true, I do. But God made me his child and heir of life everlasting at baptism. 
He washed away my sins, all of them. And he could do this because Jesus, my Savior, took them to Calvary and died for them. When his conscience reminded him of hurtful words spoken to his wife, Pat, to the loved ones in his family, and of evil thoughts, Jesus comforted him in the sacrament of the altar, which he received here at the altar and at the kitchen table in the apartment with his wife and son, David. He heard the words of Jesus, This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Go, my child, sins forgiven, at peace and pure. And when the world whispered, You aren't any better than anyone else, Milton, Milton could say, I don't claim to be, but Jesus died for me and rose again the third day, and by faith in him I am a child of God. I think you'd also agree that life was not always sweetness and light for Milton Johns. He often felt weak and sick these last few years. Pat was there to help and comfort him. And Jesus was there too, standing beside his bed, counting down the days until he would see him face to face. The little mints will always remind me of Milton Johns. I'm guessing the Tootsie Pops will also remind the kids in the Sunday school of him for years to come. Sweets or not, they will learn to know Jesus like Milton knew him. And one day, God willing, they'll come to see Jesus like Milton now sees him. In the meantime, we'll focus on Jesus' promises. They are especially sweet because there aren't, they aren't only good for this present sour life, they're also good for the future. Jesus promises, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Jesus promises, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death into life. So if you don't find the word of God to be particularly sweet, Perhaps you've not had enough of it, or haven't really tasted it. It won't make you a good person, but God's Word will introduce you to Jesus who is perfect and pure, the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to heaven. And that's why we find His Word to be so sweet, sweeter even than mints and suckers. Amen. We'll continue with the next hymn.
please rise for prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who by your Son has promised forgiveness of sins and deliverance from everlasting death, strengthen us, we pray, by your Holy Spirit, that our trust in your grace in Christ Jesus may daily increase, and that with sure confidence we may hold fast the blessed hope that we shall not die, but depart to be with the Lord, and at the last day be raised up to everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We'll conclude with Go My Children with My Blessing.
The earthly remains of Milton Johns will be laid to rest at Northland Chapel Gardens following the service today. The Ladies of Calvary will serve a light lunch to those who do not wish to attend the graveside service and to those returning after the graveside service. All are invited to gather to remember and rejoice in God's blessings and gifts to Milton Johns. I've also been asked today by David, Milton's oldest son, only son, uh, to read the following. On behalf of Mom, Mary, and Cindy, I really want to thank you all for coming today to pay respects to Dad. I especially want to thank the tremendous staff at Lake Superior Life Care and Hospice. Louise provided me assurances and support by phone while I was in Tokyo. Nurse Veronica and the entire support team not only made regular visits to check on Dad, but would also support Mom and patiently answer all the questions we had with caring and compassion. If there is such a thing as a soft landing to the end of life, they were master pilots, truly angels on earth. Finally, Pastor Schaller, who always was always available and ready to help with anything, easy to talk to, reassuring, hopeful, and inspirational. One of my lasting memories of Dad will surely be the morning of May 19th, when Pastor Schaller, Mom, Dad, and I celebrated Holy Communion at the kitchen table. I would never have expected that to be Dad's last one. Dad left a huge mark on all he touched during his life, his work colleagues, his friends, and his church family, and of course, his own family. He lived a life of service to his Christian faith, to his country, and to his community. But as a young man growing up as the son of Milton, service also meant a lot of really hard work. From each shovel load to each swing of the pickaxe to each wheelbarrow load of clay to every other brick and every other stud, we dug a 2,000 square foot basement with the house above us and built additions to a log cabin that would eventually be called home for over 50 years. When we weren't doing that, I'd voluntarily go on house calls with him, installing furnaces, fixing hot water heaters, doing every kind of electrical work or fixing a car. He was always helping others as far back as I can remember, the most selfless guy I've ever met. One of the things we laughed a lot about over the years was that I shoveled a lot of snow, as most of you have. While he was plowing the runway from the house to 480, I was always there struggling with shovel in hand. When I was a child, I always thought snowblowers must be really expensive. <laughs> but somehow, after I left 18 years old to join the Air Force, they magically had become cheaper. <laughs> Dad purchased a snowblower the first winter I was gone. <laughs> I spent about 10 days with mom and dad at the end of May. We ate the UP's best cuisine, Culver's, Kudigi, pasties, and pizza from Main Street Pizza. We barbecued steak and hamburgers on the terrace. We had a picnic on Presque Isle and visited dad's hometown of Michigami as well as his sister Dorothy. It was a lot of activity in a short period of time, but you would have never known he was sick. He was so happy. The time was priceless. I always joked with Dad that I hope Mom had signed me up for the same extended warranty plan at birth that Grandma had signed him up for. He lived such a complete life. He was the entire package, spiritually grounded, calm, a role model that gave more than he received, as was a dear friend to many, and a loving and caring husband and parent. Dad was as well-rounded a man as I know. He'll be sorely missed. In closing, I really want to thank you all in advance for supporting my mom in my absence. She's worked so hard to make Dad comfortable, not just over the last couple stressful weeks while the spotlight was on, but over the last couple years when she supported Dad quietly as a dedicated and loving partner. Please watch over her. Thank you. That's it. Lord be with you.